What are product recommendations? How do they work? Product recommendations is the art of finding products, I guess in its simplest form, similar to what someone is currently looking at. Um, and that's the way I think most of us have seen this in the past. The idea is we're looking at you know, things about the product that someone is viewing. And if we're talking about retail, it might be the size, shape, style, price of an item. And we're finding other items which match that. And we're showing them at the critical moment where hopefully we look to drive you know, higher add to basket rates, um, higher click through rates, um, higher average order values, all dependent on the way in which we focus our time and, and how it manifests itself within the website. Why would someone use it on their website? So kind of following on from, from that question, really, you know, we're trying to drive behaviours um, associated with you know, people choosing other items to, to add to their basket. Whether it's you know, replacing the item they have with something else, so kind of improving the navigation through the site. So for example, viewing an item, um, it matches everything I want, but it's you know, the slightly wrong colour, for example. If we're populating a carousel of similar items or the same item in different colours, you know, we've kind of saved that, that customer from having to navigate around to find it. So the likelihood is we'll see a higher conversion rate. On the flip side, depending on you know, where we put this, if we had it in the, the, the cart page, for example, and we labelled it as you know, people who purchased this also purchased this, again, you know, we're looking to then increase the average order value. So a range of ways in which this can help um, improve performance, all dependent, again, on how we, on how we push this into, into the website and how we display it to users and at what point we display it to users. Does it just show users other similar products? What other examples are there where it can be useful? So, um, yeah, I, I, this is a good question because similar is quite a broad term, if you like. Um, a huge amount of information can be collected about items that people are looking at on a website. And retail is, again, the easiest example of that. You know, everything to do with something that's being viewed, a product, for example, you know, everything I've mentioned prior to this, the, the shape, the style, the price, um, the color, it could be the pattern, it could be a similar review level. Anything that you know about that product, anything which becomes almost a, a criteria, if you like, or an attribute, you know, can be, can be kept and stored and then can be referenced against to find other items or products. But it doesn't stop there, really, because if you think about what we're doing, we're just taking something with certain attributes and we're finding something similar with those attributes. Um, this could be something you populate in a search bar, for example. If someone's searching for something, we could show them things that are also similar. Um, it could work on content, such as blogs, for example. Again, if you always think about these things, you know, what's the mechanism behind it? Uh, you'll see there's a, you know, a huge range of possibilities and opportunities that you have by utilising something like this. How does it adapt? And how can I tailor it to what my users want? So again, really good question. Um, and I think that... You know, going back to the previous answer I gave, which was talking around um, you know, the, the criteria, if you like, or the attributes for a certain item, it's entirely down to you what you're trying to achieve. Either you're trying to get people to add to basket more, you're trying to increase the average order value, you're trying to increase the units ordered or the units added to basket. Whatever that is, is going to define exactly how you set this up. If you want to show more expensive products in a carousel of related products to the, the item that someone or the product that someone is looking at, you can do. If you want to show items which are cheaper to try and increase the conversion rate, you can do. If you want to show items which go hand in hand with the product that someone is viewing, again, you might increase um, the average number of units added to a basket. Again, if you think about what the outcome you're trying to achieve is, this is completely adaptable to try and help you uh, sort of service that requirement. How does it work with experimentation and a wider CRO program? With product recommendations, you're going to see you know, an uplift when you go live for the first time. But that's naturally going to happen because you're going to improve the experience users have. and We've seen it time and time again. However, they're going to work or it's going to work better in some ways than others. So we've previously talked about you know, increasing a conversion rate or increasing add to baskets depending on how you're displaying or what you're displaying in these recommendations. If you think about over a period of time testing different methods as you would do with anything you're doing on your website, you know, product recommendations is no different in that respect. You will test and try things and they will have different outputs. And over a period of time, you'll find something that works. You'll find things that work better than others. 
Um, but it's completely up to you in terms of how you run with it. But in my mind, it's its own strategy. It's its own um, you know, path of work, if you like. Why would I choose to use WebTrends Optimize for product recommendations rather than an alternative vendor? Again, really good question. Um, and I think it all comes down to the adaptability of what we have available. So we've talked about the obvious places to run things like product recommendations, you know, in a cart or basket page where people are, you know, about to go through and purchase something that's a critical time to show things they could be adding to their basket. Um, showing it on product pages to help with, with navigation, for example, again, all, all really key ways of, of using this. However, the output of what we have really is what we'd call an endpoint for you to latch on to, to display whatever you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. And, and a great example of this we've seen more recently is people using this mechanism within emails. So they're sending out a newsletter to their list of users, a new product or a new line, um, a new brands come on board, and they want to incorporate some of the products within there. Again, our endpoint is completely flexible and adaptable and allows you to do that. So everyone has their own way of doing things. You know, we've tried to create something which is you know, quite generic in terms of how it can be used and where it can be used, but ultimately you know, massively comprehensive in um, you know, how adaptable it can be in the background. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more, go to www.webtrends-optimize.com.